so this is a story of Jesus calling his first disciples. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Please join me in silent prayer. Amen. So we believe that Jesus calls people to do ministry. Not just ordained ministry, but other forms of ministry. How did Jesus call his disciples? I love this story of the calling of the first disciples because Jesus did not go up to these men and say to them, what do you believe? Do you believe in God? Do you love God? Um, what do you understand about the Messiah who's to come? He did not interview him, any of these people. Instead, all he said was, follow me and I'll make you fishers for people. Follow me. And the shocking thing is that they just followed and they messed up. I especially love the Gospel of Mark, but it's in the other Gospels too, that they just didn't get it. All the way through, they kept making mistakes. They kept getting everything wrong. But Jesus equipped them. Jesus taught them as they went along so that they were able to do miraculous things in his name because Jesus called them to follow. They followed, they had faith to follow, and then they were equipped to do these things. It sounds like the journey of our faith for all of us. So we are called in the same way. Every single person has a calling to follow Jesus. That is our primary calling every single one of us and we're called before we understand because we can't possibly truly understand about God everything how can our finite brains understand the infinite so we are called to follow to follow the teachings of Jesus to follow the teachings and to learn as we go along and then we're called to work for the kingdom of God. Well, some think that they're only called to follow Jesus, and they don't recognize a second calling, a calling to do What's going on? <laughs> I'm sorry with the sound system today. <laughs> so who is called in that second calling? Called to do something to further the kingdom of God. Okay, well, hi. Maybe it's just something with me this morning. <laughs> so, who's called for the second kind of calling? When I asked that on Tuesday morning, what the response was, well, people are called into ordained ministry. It's the ministers who are called. It's like, okay, yes. We do believe that ministers, the ordained ministers, receive a calling from God. But are we the only ones? No. Everyone is called by God. How many of you have felt a calling? Lonnie has. Lynn? Yeah. But not all of you. How do we know? 
I loved this story. And it's a story of a farmer who's out in the fields taking care of his crops. And he looked up into the sky and he saw a cloud that had the letters GPC in the clouds. And he got all excited because he thought that was his call from God. He, he interpreted that call to be, go preach Christ. And so he went running to his local church, to his pastor, and he said, please line me up. I want to preach. I have been called by God to preach Christ. And so soon after, he was invited to preach in his church, and he did. Oh, and he was on fire. He preached for over an hour, and the people fell asleep. The people had no idea what he was saying. He made no sense, but he rambled on and on and on. And so after this preaching, his friends took him outside of the church, and they said, you know, we think you misinterpreted the call. We think that it meant go plant corn. How do we know when we're experiencing a call from God? How do you know? Sometimes I have people who come in and they say, God spoke to them. And, and I want to say to them, so what did the voice sound like? Right? Some people, I believe, do hear a voice, a voice from God. I wish I did. I wish that a calling was like through a phone. And I wish that it could be texted so that that way I could read it over and over again when I look at it in disbelief and turn it off and then turn it back on. Really? It's still there. But it doesn't work that way. How do we feel a call? How do we know we're called by God? Hmm? You just feel it like a nudge. How else do you know you're called by God? Lonnie, how did you know you were called by God? Thoughts that he knew were not his own. Good. Yes. Aiden, how did you how did you experience a call? Yeah, verified by a couple of other people. Sometimes, even before it's verified by other people, it's other people who will say, like what happened to me was I had people coming up and saying, have you ever thought about ministry? They feel a call sometimes for someone else, which is sort of cool. And then it happened over and over. And it got me thinking and it got me praying. And, yeah, and then a feeling came that, this was right after that are there other ways that you've experienced calls you can see God's works and you want to be part of that good so what we believe in the Methodist Church is that when we are called by God it is verified and it's verified by the gifts that you have. And so when a minister, say, when a minister is, is um, commissioned, or in my case, there were two levels of ordination because I went through the system so long ago. And then the first level is now commissioning. And then you go into a church and you do ministry. And then after two or three years, you're... you're um, Evaluated. I was going to say judged, and that just doesn't seem right in a church. <laughs> You're evaluated to see if you truly have the gifts and graces needed for ministry. If you don't, then the church decides that, you know, you might have misinterpreted. Go back to planting corn. Right? So what if, and some of you have said you have not felt a call from God. What if you don't feel that second call 
You know, all of us are called on the first call to follow Jesus. What if you don't have, you don't experience that second call to do something more to build up the kingdom of God? Is that okay? Yeah. It could be that maybe you haven't been listening. Or it could be that just your presence in following Jesus is inspiring other people and you are witnessing and that you don't recognize that that first call is a really important call and that you are working already to help build up the kingdom of God. And it could be the sound system. I don't think I'm called to hold a mic or to, yeah, something about it today. So what kinds of things are people called to do to build up the kingdom? Jen. Called to volunteer at Corpus Christi. And isn't it wonderful to see that because of the ministry you're, you did, we are still involved in Corpus Christi, and still now we have been delivering like 16 gallons of milk, which is half of their milk for the week. Yeah, that's really, really cool. What else are people called to do? Called to listen. Yeah, that's a definite calling. What else are people called to do? To mentor our youth. Yeah, thank you for that calling. I'm so glad you've been called. <laughs> what else have people been called to? To, to be a radical lover. <laughs> yeah, what else? Called to pray. Yes. Called to pray. What else? To love one another. What about called to teach? Called to lead? What other kinds of callings? Called to help each other. Called to work toward justice. Called to, you know, we believe that people are called to do justice ministries, to go out. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind, but that some in our congregation have been called to go out to the state capital and to and to work toward justice and there are other people who are called to do the mercy to to um, provide for people two different callings is a call permanent did you like this the church finance chair year one of his term same church finance chair, year 75 of his term. <laughs> Is a call permanent? If you experience a call from God to do something, does that mean you will be doing that something for the rest of your life? No. And that includes for ordained ministry. For me to truly believe in a calling system and a call from God means that I believe that I am called to be here in this church right now for this time but it may be that the call will change at some point and it may be that I'm called to another church sometime not this year you're stuck but <laughs> I haven't experienced that call yet to go move beyond but what I've always challenged myself on is to listen to the congregation because we have a responsibility also to let people know when their call is changed God partners with us. And so someday in this church, I will be called elsewhere. And I will need you in a very loving way to let me know when my ministry is no longer effective in this church and that it's time to move to another one. Not out of anger, out of love. Because that will be all of us listening for God's call. It's not... A permanent call. Sometimes people take a position in the church and they, they feel called by God and they won't let go. Right? Or no one will let them let go. And that's not what it's about. 
Is God calling you? I put together some things that are happening and, and things that you may feel a call to, or you may not. But when we follow a call, we're less likely to burn out. When we follow a call, then we are likely to have more passion for what we've been called to do. Remember, though, that the one that always makes me uncomfortable is Moses. The call of Moses, because Moses was not a great speaker, did not want to go, and I can't imagine him feeling a whole lot of passion about, yeah, your firstborn are all going to die. I mean, that's, that was not an easy thing. Sometimes God calls us to do things that we don't really want to do, and yet God equips us to do it. So think about it and pray about it. Pray about it in the next few weeks. Are you being called to something? Are you being called to do something to build up the kingdom of God? I mean, poor Tyler, graduating from high school, a vulnerable time. That's listening, a time to listen for the call of God. Because, of course, you're going to go into ordained ministry, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so listen, pray, and accept. Because if you do experience a call from God, it's awfully hard not to answer that call. Amen? Amen. So we have a Mother's Day litany this morning. I'll read the italics. And the reason we're doing this is that Mother's Day is not easy for every mother. Mother's Day is not easy for every child. It's complex. And so, in the church, through the years, what I've heard from people is, I stay away on Mother's Day because it hurts too much. Or, like Diane, preschool teacher Diane, choosing Mother's Day to remember two sons who have died. So we have a Mother's Day litany. For all who never knew their mothers and all who chose or were compelled to let their children drift away, we ask a blessing on this day. For all who longed to hold their newborn in the arms of love and all who faced a pregnancy with fear, we ask a blessing on this day. For all who struggle with the pain of their mother's increasing confusion and all who feel the muddle growing in their own heads and seek to keep it from their parent or their child, we ask a blessing on this day. For all whose mothers never grew up and all whose mothers never learned to play, we ask a blessing on this day. For all who missed the chance to say, I love you, and all who long to say it now, but find ourselves afraid, we ask a blessing on this day. For all who carry ancient wounds, infertility, abuse, misunderstanding, anger, grief, we ask a blessing on this day. For all who struggle with regret, we ask a blessing on this day. Lord, we have complex relationships with mothers and mothering, yet we acknowledge the gift of life they have given us. We thank you for our mothers, for the joyous times, for their discipline, and for their love. We ask a blessing on this day. We give thanks for Jordan and Allison and Sarah and for the young women and their, and their partners who are evidence, again, that as we continue to, to grow in this life, we become partners with you in creating new life. We give thanks for every stage of life that we go through, for the stability of the middle-aged, for the wisdom, for the loyalty, for the faithful passion 
of the elderly. Lord, we give thanks because our world so needs us to use all of these stages to make a difference in your kingdom. Help us to be open to your call as we face a world that's full of chaos, a world that is so full of need for new life, for new creative ways. Sometimes it feels like everything is beyond our, our ability to change, that the outcomes are all preordained. Thank you that that is not so, for with you all things are possible. Help us not to despair in the face of ugliness, but to be empowered by you, to be your examples, to be illustrations for you in this world. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, who taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.